Hi there. Welcome. This is Ashley. I have been asked several genetic questions, so I thought I would go over them. Uh, just in case you have the same questions too, you can get an answer. So let's begin here. First question, if I have HLA or KIAA variants and it says no gluten on my summary, does that mean no gluten ever? I have more ones listed than twos. Great question. So with gluten, typically you may experience a symptom already. If you do have several ones in either one of these genes and you don't have any symptoms, doesn't necessarily mean that your body is loving gluten by any means. Um, especially having ones, it can indicate that your body may have a harder time breaking down gluten when you're exposed to it. So it would still be a good idea to limit your gluten intake, especially with the HLA. The KIAA is going to be a little bit more strict. So if you do have more ones or even twos on that gene, we would highly encourage you to be gluten-free. That one is more prone to celiac specifically. HLA is going to be more of a gluten intolerance. So with both of them, definitely limiting the gluten. Um, and then of course, KIAA, we would encourage more gluten-free with either ones or twos. Um, if it's just HLA that you have issues with, with your genetics, then again, limit, or if you are around gluten, we do have a product called Gluten Zyme. So it's Gluten XYM is how you spell that. Or I'm sorry, Gluta Zyme. So G L U T A X Y M, Gluta Zyme. So you can search that in our web store, and that supports digestive issues related to eating gluten. It can also then help your body break down gluten, which is ultimately the goal when you can consume it. And then it can also, if you do experience symptoms like gas, bloating, and digestion when you eat gluten, uh, then this would definitely be a great product for you. Uh, you would just take one in the beginning of each meal. So you could definitely check that out on our web store, uh, shop.connersclinic.com. And again, the product is called Glutazyme, G-L-U-T-A-X-Y-M. All right, next question. I have a one on each of the MCM6 genes. Should I be completely dairy-free? So having ones on each of these genes or each of these SNPs then does indicate that you should be more lactose uh, aware. <laughs> So definitely we would recommend you limit your dairy intake if you have ones, because ones is going to indicate that you are not breaking it down fully. If you have twos on each of these SNPs, then you would be breaking down lactose fully and you would have no issues with dairy. If you don't have any variants and they're both blank, then you definitely have an issue breaking down lactose. So if you can't be completely dairy free and you do have symptoms here and there or symptoms just related to consuming dairy, um, a product you could take is called Zymozyme. So X-Y-M-O-Z-Y-M-E. And this product does help break down lactose. Uh, it is also acid resistant and it does help break down uh, like beans and cruciferous vegetables as well. So again, another enzyme that can help break down lactose and support your digestive system. And if you cannot be uh, like aware of like limiting your gluten in, or I'm sorry, your dairy intake, or if you can't be completely dairy free then this would definitely support if you have ones in this in these genes or again, nothing in the genes uh, on those SNPs. So blanks or ones definitely want to support with adjusting your diet or taking a supplement. The ADORA gene, does this mean I should avoid caffeine completely? I love coffee. So with this gene, if you have variants on it, we would encourage that if you do consume caffeine, we would encourage that it's in the beginning of the day because then it has a less likely 
uh, <laughs> risk of affecting your sleep cycle. Um, it's processed out of your body by the time you go to bed if you are consuming it in the morning. We also can um, want you to be aware of consuming like organic coffee if you're going to be consuming it because that's just going to add to toxic load. Uh, so organic coffee, if possible, early in the day is best. If you do consume caffeine later in the day, it may disrupt your sleep cycle uh, just because it's indicating when you have variants on there that you're not processing it out fully throughout the day. So no, you do not need to avoid caffeine if you have variants, but being mindful on how caffeine affects you and the time of the day you are consuming it. And this also goes for coffee enemas too. So um, if you do have variants on here, doing a coffee enema earlier in the day would be better than before bed. Can you explain the histamine genes ABP1 and HNMT? I have variants in both and I'm not sure what supplements to take. A couple are listed on my summary. So ABP1 is going to be more Histamine in the gut, so where you're not, you don't have that DAO enzyme helping to break down histamine in the foods you're consuming. HNMT is going to be more histamine in the tissues, so it can benefit having the DAO enzyme, but not as much as it would um, if you consumed histamine scavengers. So there's two different products we'd recommend here. So HIST-DAO is most likely to be something you would take if you have ABP1 variants. So more in the gut. You can also look at the foods you're consuming. If they are high in histamine, you would definitely want the DAO enzyme to help break that down. If you are already on a low histamine diet, um, but you have a ton of variants on the ABP1, it still would not hurt to take hist DAO because that's going to be beneficial to break down the histamine. I mean, you can't avoid histamine. It's in everything. So to have that support regardless, it's going to be best. And then the HNMT, again, is more tissues, inflammation, um, skin reactions. So his, uh, clear histamine scavenger would be recommended for this HNMT gene. So those are kind of the two differences. One's in the gut, one's in the tissues. If you do have variants in both, you can take clear histamine scavenger. That would help with both of those genes instead of taking two different supplements. Um, if you can take two different ones, then they would serve a different purpose. Otherwise, histamine scavenger can help with both issues here. And adjusting your diet would also be encouraged here. Should I take a supplement with variants on the HRH1, HRH2, HRH3, or HRH4 genes? Uh, yes, if you have symptoms correlated with these genes um, and you feel like it, it, the symptoms listed on your summary are something that pertain to you, then absolutely you should take the product called Natural Clear Hist. Uh, Natural Clear Hist is going to be helpful in um, environmental, seasonal allergies, but it can also pertain to other symptoms as listed in your summary as well with each of these genes. So respiratory support, maybe um, maybe just regulating your body temperature or helping with decreasing inflammation as well. So natural clear hist is the recommendation for these genes. What do you recommend for FUT2 gene support? A few things are listed on my summary. I do have gut issues, so I'd like to address this. So FUT2 support is going to be where we would recommend like prebiotic foods. Um, if you are consuming those already and you are really trying to heal your gut, then we would definitely encourage um, SBI Protect if you're more sensitive to uh, different products, or you feel like it's really a really sensitive gut, SBI Protect would be the better option. 
Um, it's very gentle when healing the gut. And it also does have binders in it too, to bind to toxins in the gut. Uh, it's great if you have like a history of taking antibiotics, and this would be a really great recommendation. Uh, Sun Spectrum is the other option. So Sun Spectrum is going to have CoQ10, turmeric, pre and probiotics. So again, another great product for healing the gut specifically. Um, that one, you may want to start with like half a dose and work your way up to, well, it would be half a scoop, work your way up to a full scoop. Um, both of those would be good or encouraged to be added into maybe a smoothie or your favorite drink or something where you can consume it. They're both powders. Um, you can get SBI Protect in a capsule as well, um, but either one of those would be a great option. So again, depending on how sensitive your gut is or how bad you feel like your leaky gut might be, um, maybe you combine the two. That would be another option as well. Otherwise, um, start with SBI Protect if you feel like it's very severe or if you just feel like just getting into this swing of things, a leaky gut sun spectrum is great for helping with that too. Again, loaded with the pre and probiotics. So either one of those. That is all the questions I have for today. Thank you for joining me. I hope that this was helpful for you or answered any of your questions, um, or maybe you even learned something new, but I hope to see you next time on the next genetic question video. Um, thanks again. And again, we'll continue to pray for you on your health journey and we'll see you next time. Thank you.